Radar and ARPA Manual Tuning, Part 7. The objectives for this manual radar tuning is to explain the eight steps necessary to manually tune a radar properly. Most modern radars have solid state circuitry. This allows them to have features like auto tune and auto clutter. I tell my beginning students that they should not use these features until they understand how auto tune and auto clutter affects their radar. The advantage of manually tuning your radar is as a professional mariner, we now know exactly what suppressions we're putting on our radar and how much of that suppression we are using. Before we get into our eight step tuning process, first thing we need to do is turn on the radar or turn on the ARPA. It makes no difference if it's an X band or an S band radar stabilized, unstabilized. We need the radar to go through its boot up cycle and test for any errors. If we do note any error messages, we need to inform the master. So the steps to manual tuning. There's gonna be eight steps and I'll talk about each one of these as the video continues. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select the rain scale to tune the radar. Then we're gonna turn off any suppression that affects the performance of the radar. Then we're gonna do two increases. We're gonna increase the brilliance to get a nice bright picture. Then we're going to increase the gain. Then we're gonna do three adjustments. We're gonna adjust the tune we're going to adjust the gain, then we're going to adjust the brilliance again. And if necessary, at the end, we'll add any suppressions that we need for the existing circumstances. Step one, select the rain scale. Older radars in the manuals told you exactly what rain scale that we should tune. Modern radars manuals necessarily don't have that since they all have auto tune capabilities. It's difficult to tune a radar at the dock if you're in a busy harbor because of all the interference. But generally six miles and 12 miles are good radar ranges to tune your radars with. So select one of those two rain scales. Step two, turn off suppressions. These are things that affect the performance of the radar that will prevent you from getting a good clean picture or what we used to say in the old days, a good paint on your radar screen. Not necessarily in any order, but you need to turn off your sea clutter you need to turn off your rain clutter. You need to turn off interference rejection. You need to turn down or turn off your tune. You need to turn down or turn off your gain. If you have echo enhancement turned on, you need to turn echo enhancement off. And anything that says auto, auto tune or auto clutter. Step three, increase the brilliance. We need a nice bright radar screen so we can get a good radar tune. If you're on the night vision, this may affect your night vision a little bit, but you need to turn up that brilliance. Step four, increase the gain. We wanna get our gain button and increase it so we have a good saturation of gain on our radar. More than you see on this radar right here, you need a good saturation. 
I'll explain gain in a minute. Step five, adjust the tuning bar. Most modern radars have a tuning bar that looks something like this. So what you wanna do using your mouse or your joystick, you wanna get that tuning bar and you wanna fill it up as far as you can get it. If you only get it this far, it's okay. You always don't have to take it to the maximum tune. If you keep trying to tune this, It'll get fall, fall up and it'll start to fall back down again. That's not what we want. We want to get the maximum tune that you possibly can. Step six, readjust the gain. Now we're going to readjust or reduce that gain from that strong saturation we had earlier down to a light speckled background. This speckled background is important because it allows us to be able to pick up more contacts on the radar. Gain is a threshold that affects the sensitivity of the radar. I like to think of gain as noise. Since we are sending radio waves out of that antenna, we need to have enough noise returning so we can hear those contacts. If you don't have enough noise, you can't hear your contacts. So it's important that you have enough gain or enough noise in the radar that you can pick up even those weak targets or maybe some of those fast targets. Step seven, adjust the brilliance. Now we can readjust the brilliance down to whatever level that we're comfortable with for whatever our bridge conditions dictate. Step eight, add needed suppressions. So whatever the existing conditions you're surrounded with, you may need to turn on C clutter may need to turn on rain clutter. You may need to turn on interference rejection if you're getting interference from another vessel. A point I like to point out that C clutter and gain or counteract each other. If you adjust your C clutter, you have to readjust your gain. If you adjust your gain, you need to readjust your C clutter. My students ask me, what is a perfect picture on your radar? And my answer is, the perfect picture is when you're seeing what you need and what you want to see on your radar at that given moment. Improperly tuning your radar will give you wrong settings, which will give us a wrong image. So to review our objectives on radar tuning, we explain a, the eight step sequence to manually tune a radar or an ARPA. And these steps were, we picked a range scale, number one. We turned off all of our suppressions. We increased the brilliance. We turned the gain up to a good saturation. We tuned the maximum tune. We adjusted the gain down to a light speckle. We got the brilliance to a comfortable level, and if necessary, we added any suppressions that we need on our radar.